Hello everyone, welcome to Celebration Sunday. I have a really fun, cute project to share with you today. This is what we're making today. We're using the Beautifully Happy Celebration Stamp Set and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, before we get started with our project though, let's go over everything that's going on in front of you. A little bit of housekeeping work before we jump into our project. February's Paper Pumpkin is coming up. The deadline to subscribe to February's Pumpkin Paper Pumpkin is this week. I think it's Friday. I think the 10th is Friday. Yes. So you have until Friday to subscribe to the Sunshine and Smiles Paper Pumpkin Kit, which I think is going to be very, very popular. This one coordinates with the Rain or Shine suite in the mini catalog, and I love that suite. It's so much fun. Um, there was a die add-on. I think that die add-on is sold out. So if you didn't get that die add-on, I'm sorry. You probably won't need the die add-on. I, I really don't think you're going to need the die add-on to do the paper pumpkin kit. Um, this one's going to be nine cards, three each of three designs. Super cute. I am sure I cannot wait for this one. So um, if you got, if you want to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, make sure you do that. All right, my February card crate features this share a milkshake bundle. This is such a cute and adorable bu bundle. I, I moved my light today. I thought I was going to get less glare, but I guess I did not <laughs> move it enough. Um, but the Share Milkshake bundle is so cute. My card crate is a class to go. You um, get all the supplies mailed to you, including $20 in product that it, that is included in card crate. Um, you will need the Share Milkshake bundle. If you need to add that onto card crate, you absolutely can. Um, there is more details on the link in, for card crate and that link is in the video description. So make sure you check that out for all the details on card crate. Um, it's $35. You get $20 in product, all the supplies for your cards, plus video and PDF instruction. So it's a really great class to go. Um, the deadline to sign up for that is also coming up. So make sure that you, if you have not already reserved your card crate for February, make sure you do that. All right. Celebration. We're in the final month of celebration. This is it. Um, there is even more products to choose from. So if you, maybe you've gotten everything out of the brochure, um, or maybe you, you want something different from the brochure, there are, what is that? 10 other options to choose from. Most of them are $50 options. There is one $100 option, the Eden's Garden bundle, which is a great bundle. Otherwise, these are fantastic choices. Love these. There's punches, embossing folders, all of those things. Today, we are doing this beautifully happy one. This is a $100 um, celebration set. So you have to spend a hundred dollars to get this one for free, but it's a huge stamp set. There's lots you can do with this one. I'm also using just a little bit of the dandy designs DSP. This is also another hundred dollar option. This you get 48, 12 by 12 sheets. So it's a fantastic mega paper stack, but this is the one we're going to focus on today. The beautifully happy. So if you haven't got all those celebration products, make sure you are shopping my online store in February to get those. Now, if you have an extra long wish list, Make sure that you check out the um, join special. Options one and two include either the Boho Blue mini cut and emboss machine. That's option one. Or option two is the white mini cut and emboss machine. Um, each is $129. You get to choose $175 in product. Plus you get the machine for free. That's a $63 value. You get that free. Plus you get free shipping. Um, and you get to join Stampin' Up! And you get a discount on product. You get to see products early. You get to order products early. Um, and you get to be part of my team, which is always super fun. I'm always looking for more people to join. Um, option three, if you don't want one of the machines, you can still join with option three. That is $99. You choose 175 in product. So it's a great time to join Stampin' Up! That um, mini boho machine we're actually going to use today. I'm going to give you some tips about that too. All right, but we are going to jump right in. If you are shopping, this is my February host code. All orders receive a PDF with three exclusive projects. If your order's over $50 more, you're going to get that celebration product, and I'm going to send you the make and take it to coordinate with that PDF. Um, this is what we're making today. Inside this cute little box is some little chocolate cakes. These are the, the Little Debbie Be Mine Valentine's Snack Cakes. These are the chocolate ones. They have the Valentine or the vanilla ones, too, in the Valentine hearts. Um, so whichever one you can find, it should fit both of them. The vanilla or the chocolate but this little box is perfectly sized for this but you could also fill it with any number of treats so this is what we're going to make today we're going to start with our box as always oh my goodness i did not get my measurements out hold on give me one sec i have to reach over and grab my book um my desk is piled high with stuff okay hang on i gotta find my my measurements okay i got them i have a little book that i keep on my desk 
that I keep all of my all of my measurements in. And um, I got everything out except my little book. <laughs> I have though it's easily accessible on my desk at any time in case I need to make a box. It is there. All right, so this is eight and a half by eight and a quarter, so it's almost a square. So just make sure that you are aware which side is the short side, which side is the long side. I'm going to start on the, let's start on the short side. So this is the eight and a quarter inch side, and I'm going to score it at half an inch at two inches and at six and three fourths. Okay. Turn it to the long side and you're going to score it at one and a half, four, five and a half, and eight. If you joined me for my um, Facebook Live on Wednesday and my measurements were all off, my measurements were not actually off. I did the scoring incorrectly, so I was taking time today to make sure I did the scoring correctly. So, um, But my measurements were correct. I went back and double-checked all of that following the live, and my measurements were all correct. It was just um, I scored in the wrong place. So... Um, that box is good to go with those measurements and I just I took a little bit extra time today to make sure that all my measurements were correct because I didn't want that to happen again all right I am using my bone folder to make sure that my score lines are all burnished nice and um, nice and I mean I don't know they're burnished nicely <laughs> it's oh words today you guys words are going to be a challenge today um, when you use your bone folder to burnish those lines you're just going to get that nice crisp fold instead of just um, folding on that that score line that bone folder really really helps you out okay so you have a half inch line over here a half inch score line this is going to be the the glue tab that's going to go all the way around so we're going to do a little bit of trimming on this one this is on the long side so this one has four score lines the short side has three score lines so on the the long side I'm actually gonna flip it over because I can see the score lines better on this side um, we're just gonna cut out on the bottom that half inch tab down there just that little one and then we're gonna do the same thing over here we're gonna trim this at an angle and then we're gonna cut out this little half inch square and then this rectangle here and this is gonna be our little our glue tab that's gonna um, fold it in just like that okay all right, now this piece is going to be our, our flap. So this is our flap and then our tabs. So what we are saving is this piece. We're saving these two and we're saving this one. So we are gonna cut off, I'm actually gonna mark them. We're gonna cut off these little rectangles up here. We're gonna cut those off and then we're gonna cut off both of these off, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and, again, I'm gonna flip it over. My score lines are easier to see on the side that you fold into it creates that little that little bump of the score line and so it's it's easier to to see on that side so that's why I'm always flipping them over so we're gonna cut that off we're gonna do the same on this side we're gonna cut this off actually you know we'll cut all the way down on this one because we're gonna cut the whole this whole rectangle off so I'm gonna do that first cut that whole piece off that and then we can cut this off all right now we need to make our tabs for our little box so we're making these little these little tabs here so what we're gonna do is just we're going to cut down on this lid this parts the lid so we're gonna cut down on either side just like that and that's going to create our little our little tabs now I have the score line here I and I just want to make sure that I cut that out so I'm just gonna kind of just cutting out the score line there and that's just going to help our box fold together a little tabs fold in a little bit better so I'm not cutting off a lot you can see like I am oops come on come apart I'm barely cutting off anything that's just the score line that I'm cutting out okay so that is the top of the box now we're going to come in and do some rounding with a corner rounder but that is the top so far now for the bottom all we're going to do is we're going to cut up straight on the the rectangle pieces and I'm gonna fold that in and then we're just gonna notch in these are gonna be the tabs that are gonna go inside the box so if they're a little bit wonky looking that's okay nobody is ever gonna see these tabs so I'm gonna cut that and then cut this rectangle up all right and that is all of the trimming on our box I'm gonna 
lay this down so you can see exactly how I trimmed that up. I'm gonna move my trash out of the way. One sec, I don't have a lot of room on my desk, so I need to I need to maximize every inch. All right, now we're gonna grab our corner rounder and we're going to round all the tabs, all of these tabs, the, the tabs that are gonna fold in and then the lid. So just grab your corner rounder and just go through and I'm gonna fold that down so I can get in here. Just go through and corner round all of these. Now we don't have a corner rounder punch in our catalogs, but you probably have one. And if not, you can get one at on Amazon or maybe at your local craft store. They probably have corner rounders. The corner rounders are, are pretty essential. I love corner rounders. They, they just kind of clean up any, any box or any project that you're doing. It just gives it a nice, um, clean, professional looking finish. Okay, this is pretty much the box. We are gonna do one more piece of trimming. I have my heart punch, this is from my heart punch pack. And this is the back of the box. This is where we're gonna have the little, the tab that um, the box will fold into. I wanna make a little thumb notch here. So I have the heart punch here and I am just gonna eyeball center. I'm actually going to, I'm gonna use my pen and just kind of mark center. You can use a ruler and, um, mark that up with a ruler if you want. I'm just going to eyeball it and then I'm going to take my heart punch and I just want, I'm just going to kind of line up that little dot. I just want a little tiny thumb notch. You can use a corner or a circle punch if you want or a circle die. I'm just using that heart punch because it's handy. It was already on my desk and you just need to punch out just the littlest bit for that thumb notch. Okay. All right. Let's stick on our DSP first as long as it's nice and flat. Let me grab all my DSP pieces here. One sec. Okay, so I told you I was using the Dandy Designs DSP. This is another celebration option for DSP. We're gonna put one on the front, we have one on the sides, and then one on the lid like that. If you wanted to do one for the back, you could um, put that on before you do that finger notch. Um, my DSP pieces, the one for the front, let's glue that down this side, it's so pretty too. Um, the one for the front is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. And all of the measurements are in the video description and they'll be on my blog so you don't have to worry about writing anything down. My side pieces are one and a quarter by four and a half. I'll stick those down, just like that. And the other side. And then the piece for my lid, the measurement for that is one and a quarter by two and a quarter. So that one. And that goes right on the top. And now we're ready to assemble. So I'm gonna grab my Stampin' Steel Plus. Use a strong adhesive. You can use the Tombow liquid glue, tear and tape, whatever strong adhesive you have. I'm putting it on just that half inch tab on the side. Fold that second score line on the back. And then fold that first side over. And that should give you your perfect little box. All right, now I told you that those tabs were never gonna be seen, and so this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna fold the back in first. So the back is the one that doesn't have the DSP, it has the finger notch, fold that side in first. And I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna add just a little bit of adhesive to these tabs, like this. And we're gonna close those tabs in, like that. And then we're gonna sandwich those tabs in on the bottom, we're gonna put adhesive, this is our front, I'm gonna put a piece on there and then we're gonna sandwich those tabs in just like that so they are never going to be seen even on the inside of the box there's no tabs on the inside so we've sandwiched them in on the side there okay so that is that's our box let me grab a little cake out of my box here I don't have very many left my kids I need to find a new hiding spot for my little treats because I come in here and sometimes I haven't shown the box that has those treats and then I go to get more and they're all gone. All right, but there is our little box. Isn't it cute? It is so, so fun. You could fill this with any number of things, but those little Debbie, those little Debbie cakes are so good. Okay, let's do our stamping. So I have a scrap piece of white here. This is the stamp set that I'm using. This is that Celebration Beautifully Happy stamp set, free with a hundred dollar order. There are so many different options with this stamp set. This is a two-step stamp, so um, we're going to stamp the outline and then we're going to use these stamps to fill in the stamp. But if you didn't want to do that, you could always use your stamp and blends and color them any way you want. It also has so many different greetings, such good greetings too. I love those greetings. Okay. 
So let's do some stamping. Because it's a photopolymer stamp set, I am going to pull out my stamp and pierce mat. I'm going to move these out of the way. And we are going to do a little bit of stamping. I'm going to start with that big one with the flower. You can use your Stamparatus for this if you don't um, feel comfortable lining everything up without the Stamparatus. You can absolutely use your Stamparatus. Um, we're going to be a little bit daring today. I'm not going to use my Stamparatus. I did consider it, but I thought, oh, I can do it. Okay, so I just have a scrap of white. We're going to die cut this after we get it all stamped. So I'm going to stamp this down. If you are using a big stamp like this and it's a photopolymer, make sure that you use this stamp and pierce mat. It really helps get a good image. Um, you can also flip it over and um, ink it upside down too. Isn't that beautiful? Such a pretty image. That was a memento. So let me put that away. Let me move my inky stamps. Now my color combination for this, I am using Coastal Cabana and Real Red. Years and years ago, we had a DSP that had Coastal Cabana and Real Red, and it was it was one of my favorite DSPs. I loved that color combination so much, and um, so I always I always come back to that one over and over again. Okay, you know I'm only going to do one ink pad at a time because it's just a recipe for disaster. So I'm doing my leaves in Coastal Cabana, and I'm going to use my do my flower centers in Real Red. So this one will line up. Okay, I have to move it down just a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully I don't regret not using the Stamparatus. Just line it up. This one's pretty easy to, to line up. I like to just check the, the points on all the leaves and then the tops on all the leaves. Just to make sure everything is lined up. But pretty good. And this one, it gives that nice watercolor texture. So you can see that it's darker in some areas and lighter in some areas. So you get that beautiful, beautiful watercolor look with these. All right, as long as I have my Coastal Cabana out, we're going to do this top part too in Coastal Cabana. And I'm actually going to try to stamp this one twice. <laughs> this one I maybe should have used my Stamparatus for, but we can line it up. Just going to do that. And then I want it just a little bit darker. So I'm going to go in and do it twice. Perfect. And that gives just a little bit, just a shade darker. Isn't that pretty? I love Coastal Cabana. It is, it is my favorite. This is definitely my favorite color. All right. Real red. Coming in with real red. Poppy Parade would also be a good substitute here if you didn't want to use real red or sweet star sorbet would be really good too. Okay, now we're gonna line up the flowers. And I like to line up this little butt up here, this one. And I think if you get those two lined up, everything else kind of falls into place. So just line those up. Got a good press. And this has a, a definite little watercolor texture. So if you don't line it up perfectly, that's okay. It's still gonna look great how pretty that is. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. All that texture you get with all the light and dark shades of it. So pretty. All right, now I'm going to stamp the greeting. And this little tag I have die cut from the mini envelope dies or mini, mini pocket envelope. Oh, I'm going to grab them in just a second. <laughs> Let me see what they're called. Mini pocket card. Like mini. Yeah. Hang on one second. I have it right here. And now that I've like butchered the name of it, I want to make sure that we get the get the die right it is mini pocket envelope dies so I just use this little this little label right here but this is such a good die set all right so that is where this little oval came from that little stitched oval and that's it for the for the stamping so we're gonna move that aside and we're gonna die cut this I'm gonna use the largest of the tailor made tag dies of this one, little you know rounded top one. I'm going to use the largest for that one. We're going to die cut that. The whole image is not going to fit on there, so if I cut off some of the bottom, I'm okay with that. I'm going to grab a little bit of washi tape to hold it in place. Hang on. We're going to use my boho blue cut and emboss machine because I have my daughter working on um, die cutting a bunch of stuff for my class that's coming up this weekend. I'm just trying to line up where I want. I want to maximize my flowers. So... I think that's good. We're just gonna put the washi tape there. My daughter is using my big machine because she is, she's getting paid to do a lot of die cutting. <laughs> so I'm maximizing on that kid help. All right, now I have my Boho Blue mini kind of boss machine. Remember, you can get this for free with the starter kit during celebration. Now it comes with all of these plates. It also comes with um, a darker one too. This one is for embossing. 
Um, but it comes with all these plates. Now I have found that with this specific machine, with my mini boho blue cut and emboss machine, if I use the white cutting plate and then the two clear plates as directed, it is too tight and I have trouble getting getting it through with the dies. Every machine is just a, a hair different. They're all slightly different. With my white mini cut and emboss machine, the white plate works just fine. It's fine. I can use that for anything. But for this mini blue one, I have found that um, I need to use the light gray plate. This is plate number three. And then the a die cutting plate, just the clear one, number two. And then I'm going to put my, my paper on and do a, number two, another clear one on top. Um, this one will cut beautifully. I have no trouble with that gray, light gray plate. But for whatever reason, my mini boho blue one will not cut with that that white plate. So um, if you're having trouble with your mini cut and emboss machine with that white plate, try switching it up to that number three, to the light gray plate. Don't use the dark gray plate. That one will be too thin. This one is a little bit thinner than the gray one, than the light gray one. Um, so try that light gray plate if you're having trouble cutting. So I don't, it's um, all die cutting machines are just a hair. They're all a hair di different. So um, my white one, I can cut no problem with that white plate, but for whatever reason, that um, blue one fights me on that white plate. So I've switched to die cutting with the light gray one and it works like a dream. All right, this so I have die cut a few other pieces. I've die cut the same size in real red of that Taylor Made tags and I have a little um, reinforcer hit there and I'm just gonna use a tiny dab of liquid glue and I'm gonna stick that on. I'm gonna grab my Take Your Pick tool. And I'm going to just stick that on. We're going to give this just a second to dry before we really start assembling it all. All right, I also have die cut a heart out of Pool Party. And I used the Give It A Whirl dies for that one. I used this biggest heart here. And it does stitching on the outside, but when you die cut it, you get just that plain heart on the inside. So, so pretty. Such a good um, die set too, just for lots of little accent pieces. There's clouds in here too, which are phenomenal. So that Give It A Whirl die is one of the best ones. All right, let's start layering this up. I'm gonna use my Stampin' Seal Plus, or just Stampin' Seal. You can use Stampin' Seal Plus. I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that left side, and we're gonna line this up. I'm gonna line up those holes, and I'm just gonna offset them just a little bit. Okay, and this is gonna go on with dimensionals onto my box. Before I stick it onto my box, I want to tie that ribbon, or at least I want to get the ribbon th threaded through that hole. Once it's on the box, it's going to be much more of a challenge to get it through the hole, but I'm not going to tie it yet, but I am going to thread it through the hole, and I'm using the Real Red Ruffled Ribbon. This is in our annual catalog. This is one of my favorite, favorite ribbons. Hold on. Oh my goodness. Of course, it's like, nope. You don't want to play nice. Okay, so we're just going to get that ribbon through the hole because once it's through the hole, it'll be easier to tie. And with the weight of the box, it'll give us some stability to tie it on there. So we're just going to stick that on there. And I'm just going to stick that aside. We're going to tie that in just a minute. So I'm going to stick that whole roll off to the side. All right, dimensionals on both of these. I'm going to put a dimensional on the heart, and that pool party heart, which coordinates so well with our, with our Coastal Cabana. A dimensional on the greeting. And that one goes right on the heart, just like that. So pretty. All right, before we tie that bow, that'll be the last thing we do. I have a, some iridescent rhinestones here, and I'm going to stamp, put that right in the middle. There is a stamp in the stamp set that you can stamp the center if you want. It's this little tiny, this little tiny dot here. That one will actually stamp the center of your flower if you don't want to use an embellishment. But, you know, why not use those embellishments? We have them, right? All right, so I saved this for last because... <laughs> A bow on camera. All right, so I'm gonna pull this through. I have, I don't know, seven, eight inches pulled through. I'm gonna loop it in the front. I'm not tying a knot because that's gonna make it really big. This um, ribbon is a little bit bulky. So I'm gonna take that back ribbon, fold it over, and then just tuck it behind, just like that. And that's going to make a nice little bow that's gonna be flat and pretty. You can finagle it a little bit. And I like to leave this one nice and nice and big, big loops, big tails. Just trim that off just like that. And that completes our box for today. 
Let me move this stuff out of the way. Isn't that beautiful? So pretty, right? The, that color combination, that Coastal Cabana and the Real Red is so, so pretty. All right, guys, that is it for me. If you are shopping, make sure to head to my online store. Use this host code. This is February's host code. Um, and make sure that you use that when you shop with me. If your order is under 150, make sure to use that host code. If your order is over 150, you're going to get stamping rewards. So don't use that host code. Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, please share it with your crafty friends. If you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel. I will be live this week in my business page on Wednesday again. And I will actually be live on Karen Titus's page on Thursday. Karen Titus is, um, she's one of my uplines. She's in my, my level of uplines and she is number eight in the company. She is a phenomenal demonstrator and she has invited me to be in her Facebook live. She's going to be here in Albuquerque. She's coming to my class next week and I'm so excited to welcome her to my class, but she has invited me to be in her Thursday Facebook live. So if you follow Karen Titus, um, stamping on the back porch, make sure you follow her Facebook live, uh, Thursday, 1 PM central time, I believe. And, um, I will be on, on there as well. I don't, I'm not making a project. Karen's going to be doing the stamping, but I will be there just as a, as a guest. All right, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining me. I'll be, be back live again next Sunday too, with another celebration Sunday project. Um, I'm not sure which one we're going to be working with yet. I got to go through the catalog and see what we haven't done yet. I may do a poll on my blog and, or on my Facebook page and see what you guys want. All right, guys, thanks for joining me again. Have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you guys next week. Bye.